Okay, so now we're going to get into the transition part of the swing. And this is where it's pretty much make or break what happens with the golf swing from this point on. We've heard a lot about moving on to our left side when we're swinging. Now, I really think that's a big downfall of a poor golfer. Now, they, they take that literally. They'll get up the top here, and they'll just go straight to their left side, and it, it automatically just throws the arms over that way as the weight moves forward. So they lose their center, they lose their sternum and torso rotation by driving straight to their left side. All the good players felt like they were going left and they did go left but there's a reason for that as they got up to the top here they pushed down their right leg more so you actually push down your right leg and my weight in this leg and hip go that way just because I'm a human because I, I have balance if it didn't I'd just fall over down here so we go up to the top push down our right leg just ever so slightly this counterbalances to the left now we've got the club behind us and as then we turn and rotate then most of the weight then finishes left on the other side of the ball. Now weight is still really going to be behind the ball because we've got our torso rotated. Down the right leg saves all our rotation so we can see most of my weight is behind the ball. Now if I drive onto my left side now you can see, like, closer to half and half is on either side of the ball. So that's going to promote this steeper downswing, less forearm rotation, and the club's going to come over the top. So most people go at the top, they hear drive left, so they go left and then all of a sudden the hands just start pulling the club down this way. So to make our body work properly, we've got to sequence it. So the, the ideal sequence would be up, down the right leg, let this counterbalance, lets the club head fall behind us, gets our elbow in, and then from there, then we can start making all our body get involved in the shot. So it's only for a split second, but it makes a massive difference as to path and as to what our forearms are doing. If I get up the top, pull that way, I've lost my forearm rotation as opposed to here. So if I'm coming down from the top of the swing here, see it from this angle, if I pull with my left side, automatically wants to come over this direction. If I work down my right leg, my left still leads, still goes that way, but I've got all this torso saved and the club slots behind me. So from there I have somewhere to go. So to make the pivot work we have to have the club behind us. If I'm over here and my brain says target's here, everything just works. If I'm over here, my brain says the target's there, I've got to stop something and throw my hands and arms or hold on the ball so much less effective method trying to get your weight too far left and we'll see this in uh, a lot of the players see uh, Sam Sneed with his squat if you go down your right leg your left leg counterbalances you there's your squat right there Sergio does it from more of a bent right leg at the top. So he doesn't look like this goes as much, but it's still counterbalancing a little bit. And then a few players like Hogan that went from straight, more of a straight right leg, push down your right leg, and it looks like you actually fall on a long way left.
see a lot of this in transition where we're actually still going, the club head is still going back as we're starting down. So it's not as if we're getting up here, getting down our right leg and then going, it's all in motion, it's a bit of both. As the club's still working back, we're going down our right leg and that's helped load the club in towards us. This loading of the club towards us then helps us get that butt of the shaft out above the ball which is obviously saves our torso and makes all the pivot work. We've got the, uh, you know, the poor golfer who, who doesn't have any torso work at all in his swing. You've probably seen this guy on the range. Just pick his arms up so there's really no torso rotation whatsoever so unless he makes a massive move like this coming down he's never going to get the club behind him. He's just up and he's down. And also got the guy that has too much weight on his left foot going back. Same thing. What that's doing is it's really inhibiting the amount of shoulder turn that we get on the backswing. So it's you got to pick your poison on the backswing, what works best for you. Obviously, we want to get our weight behind the ball and onto our right leg a little bit. Because, again, that gives us this avenue to get the club into coming down. So there's, uh, that's why I don't teach the backswing too much. I get everyone to work on impact first, what happens through there and beyond. And we start working on transition, and a lot of their backswings from all that so like I said it's no use trying to be perfect back here call that an on plane backswing doesn't matter if you're not loading and you're just pulling it's not going to make any difference coming down so we don't hit the ball with our backswing we hit it from here onwards so that's where we're really building our swing around and the rest will start to take shape once we get better and better at that So this is, uh, all blends in with my footwork video also, where you can see a little bit of that foot, rear foot moving. And that's all because there's still a lot of pressure down in that right foot. And you can do it uh, flat footed, you can do it on your toe and still put a lot of pressure down my foot, even though it's my heels up off the ground. And that's just all balancing clubs behind me, I'm going to feel weight here, and here, and then as I get into the zone, it starts to move around, it goes in a rotary circular fashion. If I just come steep, most of my weight's on my front feet, and I can't really do much with my pivot, because I'm not balanced and working this, this manner. So then we'll see the up on the toes type thing, and a lot of, a lot of this, because this has nowhere to go to. So hopefully that gives a little bit of understanding. We certainly get our weight left, but it's not an intent. It's just our body at work. And then of course as the mass just keeps moving, then we do really end up on our left side. And I got some pictures of this uh, golf article back in the 80s. Probably not as high tech as what we have today, but it still shows really what's going on scales in the background it'll show you a lot to do with where the weight is and where we think it is so it's a feel versus real thing a bit of both we like I said we are going left but we're really trying to pressure down down the right because the right gives us all this rotation to be able to use later on and it gives us this avenue to get the club into. Our left leg balances us so we don't fall over and from there in position to just keep on turning, get through the shot with nothing disconnecting. So hopefully that'll help you get a good understanding of that and do some work in a mirror, start off with some small shots and feel that, that you're, uh, you're going to feel more right go left, just like you would throw a ball back, 
Oxford. So there's a few ways to do that. We can be evenly matched, we can be back a little bit. There's a lot of options to get the club back and into this zone because really this is where we hit the ball from. So trying to be on plane up here, it doesn't really matter because as soon as we get up here and we're, we're moving things, all that plane's going to move. So you'll see uh, it's got a lot of, to do with tempo, how we do this. A quick tempoed person. They would build a lot of this in at the start. They'd build a lot of that rotation in and turn around here. You'll see the shorter hands and less shifting. A lot, lot more sort of looking up and down motion even though, even though there is something going on. And then a smoother tempo if you think Fred Couples or Furick or someone like that. Slower tempo. They would sort of build that in as a coming down so they'd be smoother give themselves that working into down their right side with that forearm staying open so the idea of the forearms being rotated is it shallows the club it's very simple as soon as my forearms aren't rotated I get steep and the club face gets closed so obviously if we're coming in from here with a closed club face I can't swing and release because I'm just going to hit it over here. So that's why the body stops. You'll see this type of motion then maybe a little bit of that to play catch up. So the more we're getting into this slot, our avenue to get the club into by working down our right leg and saving this torso, a little bit of forearm still rotated in. As you free ride right there, we're just up, boom, not doing anything working down our right leg and then we've got all this range of motion we'll be able to work through the shot and accelerate and hold the club face and the shaft on a much straighter arc and direction. There's a lot going on in the swing, it helps to understand it a little bit more. So I think that should give you a little bit clear idea of what's really happening. So remember, it's as we're going. As we're still going back, we're starting to push down, so it looks like we're going that way. It's mainly a counterbalance thing to help us find our slot. We go up and stop, and then start to pull. Obviously, we're, gonna, we're not getting the motion going together, so we go up, pull down, we go drive left straight away. We're in a lot of trouble. We have to make a lot of adjustments to get the club on the ball from there.